Considering Oni Site Alpha must surely be one of the shortest levels in the entire Halo series, clocking in at 10 minutes or so, you sure do get a hell of a lot done. Blowing up a bridge, clearing the site's outskirts, fending off attackers from inside the main building and then escaping, there's a lot going on. It's also one of those rare Halo missions during which you spend most of your time retreating, giving it a very different feel from most others. Only Site Alpha begins with a demolition mission. Hurry up! Look, you want to do this? Be my guest. But this ain't a job you want to rush. That do it? Signal's good! Arm the other detonators and pull back to me! And let's be honest, we all ignored Mickey and put Dutch's Spartan laser to immediate use. Dutch, arm the other charges! What about those rays? Forget about him, we got explosives to set! I love the contrast between the two characters, with Mickey the explosives expert focused on getting the job done, while Dutch simply wants to blow everything up. Bungie must have presumed you would want to use the Spartan laser straight away too, as they send in a couple of banshees which are positioned perfectly for you to shoot out the sky using the big green gun. This opening sets the tone for the level as a whole. Fighting through Teari Plaza, using vehicles to cut a path through Uplift Reserve and exploding everything in sight using a tank across Kazingo Boulevard. All of Halo 3 ODST's previous outings had been about pushing towards your enemy, about breaking through their defences, whereas here, for arguably the first time, you're on the back foot. It undoubtedly makes it one of the game's most exciting set pieces. Being thrown straight into a dire situation really raises the stakes early on, with the immense Covenant presence serving to highlight the site's importance. Despite being given orders to head up a guard tower at the end of the bridge and detonate the explosives, you don't have to. There's a cannon nearby you can hop on to cause a little extra destruction, which I always gleefully take advantage of, but the bridge does eventually need to be taken out. You can hop off the cannon at any point, climb the tower and do it yourself, or you can ignore it entirely, which means eventually Dutch or a nearby NMPD officer will do the job for you. I suppose events do need to proceed at some point, regardless of how much fun you're having. Ah, uh, man, Covenant landing on the other side of the wall. Bim bam and a brain pan. Only Alpha Site is the most relentlessly paced level in ODST, which works excellently alongside that idea of constantly retreating mentioned earlier. It does, however, mean a lot of its sections are blink and you'll miss it bursts of action. The bridge demolition earlier, and the turret holdout, elevator ride, and rooftop battle later, all of them last no more than a couple of minutes before Bungie hurries you along. This battle right outside the site's main building is the meatiest chunk of uninterrupted gameplay, and it's the best part of the mission. Your first task is to clear the area ahead of you, a relatively tricky proposition given the presence of two hunters along with the usual assortment of ground troops. Then you need to head up to the building's entrance as even more baddies are ferried in to ruin your day. You are given plenty of tools to bite back at least, with turrets galore at your disposal and sniper rifles dotted around so you're able to keep your distance. It's a beautifully designed arena to fight through, with a three-lane structure most commonly seen in online shooter maps. Here it's a setup which works just as well for a single soldier shootout, as all of your enemies come from one direction, which allows you to dance back and forth between the left, right and middle sets of stairs as needs be. I've no idea whether Bungie designed the environment for the campaign first and foremost and then ported it across to ODST's multiplayer firefight mode, or vice versa, but either way, it's testament to how considered its layout is that it works so well across both. Only Alpha Sight also has a surprising amount of dialogue considering its length, with Dutch, Mickey, Marines and NMPD officers all chiming in at very regular intervals. It goes a long way towards heightening the feeling of plans being made on the fly, as everyone tries to make the best of a particularly bad situation. Honestly, I had to stop myself from including about 30 clips from throughout the level in this video, there's that much quality chatter. Reaching the main building, it turns out a plan for what to do next is already in place. Hurry up, man! Check those charges! Wait, what? More explosives? Yeah, what gives? I thought we were supposed to protect this building. I have orders to deny enemy access to all classified data housed in this facility. You don't like it, jump your butts back into orbit! Only thing I don't like is that our butts are currently inside this facility.
With the site housing a lot of extremely sensitive information, preventing the Covenant from getting inside its main building and accessing the data within is of the utmost importance. At this stage of the campaign, you probably won't realise just how vital stopping them actually is though. It's only later revealed that both the data core of the Superintendent AI, which manages New Mombasa's infrastructure, and part of the Forerunner's Ark seen in Halo 3, are both housed directly below the site. Later, during Data Hive, Dare actually mentions the site's destruction, not really realizing that it was members of her own team who were partly responsible. Some idiots blew the building at the top of the shaft, woke the whole hive. Back to events at hand, your next objective is to set up in the middle of the main hall and fend off any enemies who make it inside. This is one of those sequences which I think works better on lower difficulties. In the footage on screen, I'm playing on normal and I'm able to safely sit using the turret, raining down hell indiscriminately on anything and anyone which dares to enter through one of two doors. It's brainless entertainment, which sounds like a criticism, but believe me, it's not. Grunts holding plasma grenades ready to sacrifice themselves run straight at you, no doubt sent in to soften you up. Jackals and brutes then follow closely behind, and cutting them all down amidst the explosions the grunts leave in their wake is immensely satisfying. On harder difficulties, the turret is essentially useless, and you'll need to resort to more conventional means lest you get swamped by onrushing enemies, and it's nowhere near as much fun as taking the easier route. Choosing the less taxing option also makes the set piece flow a lot better. First, you remain stationary, covering the two doors, and then after, you can rip the turret away from its mount and go gung-ho as more baddies drop in from behind. Once it looks like the Covenant's assault is over, at least for the time being, you hop in an elevator and ride up to the building's roof. Along the way, you'll have to swat a gaggle of drones. It's nothing much to write home about, although the drone's plasma pistol fire set against the dimly lit elevator makes it a visually unique encounter. During the skirmish, Dutch also asks where they've all come from. Where the heck did these buggers come from? Underground tunnels are filled with the damn things. With your allies' answer being a subtle tease towards what's to come, as you later discover their nest during Data Hive while exploring the tunnels below. Your final fight occurs on the rooftop itself as one last group of Covenant is ferried in to stop you escaping. The brutes bouncing around the roof with jetpacks are a highlight. It also sort of makes sense. I'd certainly want a jetpack if I was fighting somewhere with a risk of falling, and if playing on Legendary, a chieftain would also be on hand to cause more problems. If the earlier turret sequence was more fun on easier difficulties, I'd say here the chieftain's presence makes the encounter a lot more interesting, as you don't have too much space to work with. Also, the backdrop featuring the remains of the space elevator destroyed earlier during Uplift Reserve, very cool. This is the second time you play as Dutch during the campaign, the first being Uplift Reserve where you can see the elevator fall, and it's a great way of adding further environmental consistency to the world across his two levels. After clearing the rooftop of Covenant, a pelican arrives to collect Dutch and Mickey, at which point only Alpha Sight ends with a big bang. Glad you boys are safe and sound. Likewise, Gunny. You need a pickup? As long as you're offering, we're in the police HQ. Can you take us there? Affirmative. All right. Get you up top. What? <laughs> this day ain't turning out so bad after all. Despite the wider Halo 3 ODST story being one of the invasion of Earth, which of course is a nightmare for humanity, most of the missions leading up to Oni Alpha Sight are about taking the fight to the Covenant as much as they do to you. This level feels like a big turning point. Even after your valiant efforts across many encounters, you've no choice but to keep retreating, and the reward for your heroics is the destruction of the very building you've worked so hard to defend. With regards to gameplay, it's one of the campaign's more vanilla inclusions, although burning through turrets like they're going out of fashion is awesome, but only Alpha Sight's quick pace and desperate tone help it stand out nonetheless. Thanks for watching the video, boys, girls, and Spartans. If you had a good time, do consider liking, subscribing, and letting me know what you think of Oni Alpha Sight, and hopefully we'll catch up again soon.